Jesus. Okay, everybody, everybody, are you back with us? Please let us know. We're finna start inviting everybody back. Okay, Nai Nai, you're here, honey. Good, good. Okay, yeah, I think it was. Awesome. I think it was music. We're not quite sure exactly what happened. But we're seeing the numbers grow. So everybody, if you're in the house, please do say hello, hello. That way we know we can move on and go. Top of the morning, everyone. Praise God. Can y'all hear us? <clears throat> Excuse me. Can y'all hear us all right? Do my invites again. <laughs> the enemy is not stopping a thing. Hello, good morning, okay, Ramiro. Yes. Hey, hi. Pandos, hallelujah. Yes. Look, look yes. Pandos are here. Praise Nessa, God. hey, honey. Hey, good morning. We can have service now. <laughs> Ramiro said, now I can comment. <laughs> <laughs> We're so sorry about that. Hallelujah. We think it was probably the music. Yes, you know. Saw. It was climbing and it dropped and froze at zero. We're glad y'all are back. Can y'all hear us all right this yes. morning? Yes, Naisha said that she can hear us. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you. awesome. God bless you, okay. Let we just... think it was the music, guys. We think it was the music. You know, when we play those known worship songs, I think they try to kind of cut us off. So, uh, unfortunately, I think that's what happened. Because now we're seeing the numbers climbing. Okay. <laughs> Ramiro said, all good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, pastor's inviting. Hey, you guys, you do some inviting too, okay? We're trying to get everybody back in here, trying to figure out exactly what had happened, but I think we know what happened now. So just take a moment to invite two to three people from your friends list, okay? Two to three people. That's all you got to do. Just invite two to three people if you can, okay? Get Makisha, Makisha. Yes. Hey, Barry, good morning. God bless you, sir. Good day. <laughs> My man. God bless you, brother Barry. Let me show you me. Mm hmm. M E M I. All right, y'all. Praise God. Yes, 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 everybody. <clears throat> there she go. Hey, Momo, sweetie. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. We're just getting back right. Hallelujah. Yes. Like we were telling everybody, we believe that what happened was, you know, when you play those known worship songs, as soon as they hear it, for some reason, they decide that they're going to go ahead and nix it. But um, we came on back. Amen. Because we're not letting anything stop the word. Amen. We's not playing that game. Amen. So if you can, just invite two to three people, okay? Everybody just take a moment to invite two to three people or anyone that you saw that was already in service. That way we can get everybody back in and get ready to get service going. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right, Momo. That's right, y'all. Two to three people. Come on. Invite someone and share the service. Come on, y'all. We already up to the seven people. Come right. on. Come Praise on, y'all. We doing this thing. We growing and we going, y'all. God is doing some amazing things, y'all. We're up to eight people. Come on, y'all. All right. Amen. We're doing this thing. Makisha, yes. Hey, sweetie. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come Come on. on. Look, we got a fire, fire word. Come on. Yes. We're going to go into this work. 
We'll just go back over that prayer. Father, we just thank you for each and every person that is online. Father, we thank you that the enemy will not stop this word. We thank you that your fire is being released over the heads of your people, Father. We thank you that each and every one of us are set to be, you know, filled and just set on fire by your word, Father. We thank you that we are here, not by coincidence, Father, but we are here on purpose in the name of Jesus. We are about to receive of your anointed word, Father, from your anointed servant. We thank you, Father, that the word that is going to go forth is going to set us straight on our path, Father, that we are going to hear what we need to hear to steer us in the right direction, Father, that we are absolutely, absolutely on the path that you have called us to, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We are grateful. We are appreciative of what you have coming forth for us today because we are your temple, Father. And we need to be cleansed by you. We need to be set straight oh, yeah. by you, Father. We love you and we thank you that you love us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray this morning with joy in our hearts. Amen. amen. And amen, Lord. God. We thank God for this awesome morning, everybody. We thank God. Nakisha, good morning to you too, honey. Bless you, each and every one we of love you. you guys. Naisha, yes, sweetie. Top, yes. Top of the morning to each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Y'all already know. Hallelujah. We're by the word prophetic ministries. Pastor Marcus, Prophetess Mickey. Yes. We're here. You're here. Jesus is here. And we thank you so much for being with us today. Hallelujah. We pray you'll be blessed. Just a few quick announcements. Please do, if you haven't already, get your Bible, get your notebook. Let's lock in and get what we need this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord always has something to say about our situation. He always has something to say about where we are. He always has something to say about where we are going. So hallelujah. We want you to receive today in Jesus' name. Just a few announcements. Just a couple of quick announcements. First and foremost, you guys already know our ministry website, www.awpm.org. You already know. Go by. Check us out. See what we're about. Look, if you're in prayer and contemplation about where you want to be settled, where you get your roots dug down into the word of God, into his spiritual family, look. Be in prayer and in contemplation, but check us out. See what we're about. Amen. Get to know who we are. Get to know the mission and the vision of this particular ministry that God has placed in this earth to get his work done. We're not the only ones. Amen. But we are a good one. Amen. So go by and check us out and pray and contemplate on that. Amen. You want to be here? We want you here. Amen. So go by and check us out. Also, our ministry email, everybody, you already know, A-W-P-M-I-N-21 at gmail.com. Please, if you have prayer requests, counseling requests, things of that nature, if you're dedicating your life to Christ, um, yes, for the first time you're giving your life to Christ or rededicating your life to Christ, please send us an email. Let us know that this is what happened as a result of the ministry that God is sending forth through us. We would love to know. We want to know. This blesses us more than anything. I'm telling you, this is what we're here for. This is the call of God on our lives. And we're excited to take these steps forward with you. You need help in your walk. You need to know what steps you need to take forward. You need to know what you do after you've given your life. You you just don't quite know what to do. Hit us up at this email. We're here for you. Amen. Praise God. So again, AWP. M-I-N-21 at gmail.com. Amen? Amen. Also, our ministry YouTube channel, every single one of our services are archived for you. Amen. So if you had to work, if you were sick and you weren't feeling too good and you were asleep and you were getting better, you missed the service. You didn't miss it. We archived it for you on our ministry YouTube channel. And it's under what? The name of the ministry, <laughs> Abiding Word Prophetic <laughs> Ministries. Please go by, get your spirit man filled up. Don't let the enemy make you become spiritually bankrupt. Go by and get built up today in the name of Jesus. There are so many, there, there, there's such a wealth of knowledge from God. There's such a wealth of wisdom from God within those messages just for you. There's no reason why you shouldn't have that wisdom today. Go by, 
Make sure you subscribe and hit that what? Ding! Yes. Notification bell. And Amen. Thank you. thank you to all of you who have. Yes. Thank you. thank you. We appreciate it. God bless you. We love you guys. We're up to 14 subscribers and we praise God for it. It's growing. It's we, growing it's yes, growing. it's growing slowly but surely. Amen. We're not looking for the big boom out of nowhere. We know that slow growth is better than no growth. Amen. That's right. Amen. We want everybody to be genuine and to receive of God. Amen. So you just make sure you be a part of that growth. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, our ministry YouTube channel is under the name of the ministry, Abiding Word Prophetic Ministries. Amen. Also, our ministry cash app. Everybody, look, be a blessing to the ministry. That is a blessing. If you are feeding, you feed it too. Amen. And we're not saying a particular amount because God doesn't say a particular amount. But he does give principles to go by. Amen. You give according to what you have, not what you don't. So I can't tell you to give 100 if you only got 10. I can't tell you what to give at all. Amen. I don't know your paycheck. That's not my business. Amen. That's between you and God. Amen. But if you are a member of this ministry, amen, we are what? Tithe and offering givers. Your pastor and I are tithe and offering givers, not because somebody told us to do it, but because God requires and desires that of us as his sons and daughters. Amen. There's teaching on it. And if you need further understanding on it, we're here for that. Amen. So if you need a little more understanding on it, we're here. Hit us up by way of the email that we showed you earlier and we'll get with you. Not a problem. Amen. Just hit us up. Let us know. But we thank God for each and every one of you who are dedicated givers, dedicated tithe and offering givers. And if you're just a friend of the ministry, offering givers, we thank God for you. Amen. Because you believe in what God is doing through this ministry. We're getting the work of God done. Amen. We're excited about it because there's so much more to come. Amen. So thank you for what you have done and know that you can give at the beginning of the service, in the middle of the service, and at the end of the service. Whenever that word is pricking that heart, you're falling so much more in love with God and you're getting what you need. You give your seed. Amen. Love on the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And again, each and every one of you, we thank you for your faithful support. We always say nothing too big, nothing too small. And we thank you for what you do and what you're able to do. God bless you. God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And finally, yes. membership. Come on. Boom. You already know. Get in, Get this, in this house. house. Get in this house. Look, if you want to be here, we want you here. We always say, why are you out here trying to brave the elements alone? Come on here. That's not what you were called to do. That's not what God created you to do. He created you because he wanted a family. Glory to God. You're to be in his spiritual family. Amen. You're not to be out here in this world alone trying to figure out what to do, how to do, trying to figure out who you're supposed to be when God has already told you who you are. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. You don't know who you are? Get in this house so you can discover who you are Amen. and how powerful you are. You were not created without purpose, honey, in the name of Jesus. And we are excited to help you discover it. Amen. And get you to where you're supposed to go with it. Amen. So look, you want to be a part of a spiritual family as you should be. We want to be a part of that spiritual family with you. AWPM, we want you here. We love you. We're not about judging you, but getting you in here and getting you through and to. Amen. So hey, Let's do this together. Amen. You don't have to do this alone, but you can take your time, pray and consider, but know that we're here and we're with arms open, ready to receive you when you are ready. Amen. And at any given time, if you feel that desire come upon you and you're praying and you're like, Lord, I just, I've just been waiting and waiting and I really want to make that step and you're making that you have that struggle, that inner struggle. Know that the enemy is actually fighting you because he knows that if you make that move, it's over for him. That's his neck. Make that step in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just do it. Don't be afraid. Just do it. Just like Nike tells you, just do it. Amen. 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 Make that move. And we're here to receive you. And we're going to go to new levels and new heights. It's time to level up. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. And look, you can just say, I am 
ready, literally. That's all you have to say in the chat at any given moment or you can send the email to us. I am ready. And we know what to do next. Hallelujah. With that said, I'm getting out of the way because God has a word to say through your pastor. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. And God bless you, First Lady. Always doing a wonderful and marvelous job. Looking so lovely. Looking festive. Looking young. <laughs> hallelujah. Fruitful. Hallelujah. He renews our strength. Praise God. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Love Daddy. You, sir. Oh, man of God. No problem. No problem. We just we thank you for, for tuning in, each and every one of you. But again, I want to give it up for First Lady. Working, 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 and serving. <laughs> hallelujah. Doing the work. I thank God for you. Thank you. Come on here. Praise God, each and every one of you. Welcome this morning. It's abiding word. It's Sunday service. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is already moving. It is countdown to Christmas. Hallelujah. We pray uh, that you can, uh, you know, get some rest. It's, it's uh, you know, can be a very busy season. Hallelujah. And there's a lot moving, a lot doing, but we pray that joy, that joy remains, that joy abides. And, you know, the real reason for the season is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. So. Merry Christmas to you today. We're going to go into just a quick uh, word of prayer, free word. Again, the, the spirit of the Lord is already here. We're still on this season's series. Hallelujah. We were seeking the Lord, trying to see which direction to go. And it's just there. Hallelujah. He's, he's ministering to us along these lines and pray is blessing you. We pray you're getting it. Hallelujah. We treat this morning, man, first lady. We're going to work this together. Hallelujah. We're going to tag, preach this thing. Hallelujah. So uh, some of the scriptures uh, that we'll be going over today, uh, First Lady had them for you. If you could jot them down, you know, for your reference as we're moving and grooving. Hallelujah. But if you can, just bow your heads. A quick word of prayer. And we're going to run on with Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we come before you today, and we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy, Father. We thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your kindness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just honor you today, and we pray, Father, that you would touch our hearts today in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Give us tender, receptive hearts, Father that we can receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today in Jesus' name. We pray for divine grace, Lord, grace, grace to minister this word. Lord, let it come forth as you would have it, communicate and convey your heart and your mind. Let it come forth in the spirit, God, that you intended in Jesus' name. Let everything wicked, dark, foul, and evil be destroyed. We curse, block, and bind every work of darkness, every worker of darkness. We bind distractions of every kind in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray you saturate these airwaves and we pray you minister to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Meet us where we need to be met. Oh, God, let your word come forth and pierce and penetrate all darkness in Jesus' name, Lord. You know what we have need of even before we ask. Lord God, reveal to us, reveal to us what we cannot see any other way. What we have no other way to grab a hold of than if you give it by your spirit. We pray for grace today and strength, hearing ears and hearing hearts in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen to it. Glory to God. Well, again, we are on the Seasons series. And again, we pray this has really been blessing you. Hallelujah. Um, today's message, we're taking for a title today, The End of a Season, The Grace to Say Goodbye. Oh, glory to God. Come on. It's right there on the screen. The end of a season, the grace to say goodbye in the name of Jesus. If you get your Bible, get your notebook, hallelujah. I would pray you lock in and, and, and focus this morning, hallelujah. Now, we're looking, we've been looking uh, in Ecclesiastes. We're looking in Ecclesiastes verses, uh, excuse me, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. 
verses 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And we're really going to focus on verses 5 and 6. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. And we're focusing on Ecclesiastes 3, 5 and 6. Hallelujah. When you got it, somebody type, I got it. Bring, you got you to gotta have your Bible, praise God. If you got it, somebody say, I got it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 through 8. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. all Hallelujah. And we read, to everything there is a season. We're in the New Living Translation. A time, glory, for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time, hallelujah, to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time, verse five now, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones. Here's what we're looking today. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse six, a time to gain and a time to lose. Be part, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace, hallelujah. Times, there's a time for every purpose under the heaven. There's a time for every season. There's a time we already, you know, we've been establishing, if, if you've missed some of these, please go back, check it out on YouTube. You know, you can get um, caught up to speed, hallelujah. But we've been saying and establishing how our times and our seasons, our destiny, our life, the events of our lives, are in the hands of God, they're in the plans of God, and he is meeting things out on his divine timetable. It's according to his will, his plan, his purpose, and his timing. Our job is to line up and obey, and we want to stay in step with the Spirit. Hallelujah. And we're focusing today, hallelujah, on the end of a season. Oh, my God. The grace to say goodbye. Hallelujah. Because we know 2022 is quickly approaching. Hallelujah. And we got, you know, New Year's and we get excited and, you know, we, we thank God. New Year, you know, with, with new things come new horizons, new territory, a new adventure. Hallelujah. But you can't get to the new until some things are settled. Hallelujah. There are some things that cannot, cannot go with us into our next season into our next stage, come on here, into the next place that God has for us. There are some things that cannot go. There are some ways we cannot take forward with us, some mindsets that have got to change, hallelujah, that we cannot take forward, some attitudes we've got to wave back to, some habits, hallelujah, some things that have formed, some things that we've done, some things that have gotten solidified, some ways that we have that we have got to allow to die. We've got to put it to death. We've got to say bye-bye to it. There's some mentalities, come on, that we've got to get rid of, that have got to go. Hallelujah. And there are some people, Lord have mercy, that we got to say goodbye to. The Bible says in the name of Jesus 
that there is a time. There is a time to embrace. Hallelujah. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to, to, to embrace, a time to gather. But there does come seasons. There does come points in the journey when it is imperative and it is vital that we know when and that we must refrain. There's a time to hug and there's a time to push away. Hallelujah. One of the most difficult things in life, one of the hardest things to do can be to say goodbye. Was it boys to men? Glory to God. I think mm -hmm. boys to men said it as well. Brother boys, them and men, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. Come on, singers, to yesterday. I ain't gonna try to sing yeah. it. I'm gonna spare you this morning. But you get the point. <laughs> Glory to God. It can be extremely difficult. Now, some things, some seasons, some circumstances, it is easy to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. As they say, good riddance to bad rubbish. I'm so glad this is over. I'm out. This is easy. But we meet junctures in the stage when the separating isn't so easy, when parting isn't so easy, when saying goodbye, when cutting some things off, when walking away, when doing hallelujah what is necessary isn't always super easy to do. And there are emotions involved. And, 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 and there's things vested in. Hallelujah, there's time, there's tenure, there's emotions, there's feelings, hallelujah. There's some things that have been built and established along the way. Hallelujah. But there comes a time when the season comes to an end. There comes a time when we've got to walk away from some things. And as you're pondering and thinking about your life and your year and your times and your seasons, and as we're on the brink of 2022, Hallelujah. You've got to think and examine over your life because we know time itself doesn't necessarily just change things. Hallelujah. The calendar can change. The day can change. The, 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 you know, the uh, time of day, the hour can change. But if, if our mind is the same, if our heart is the same, if our actions are the same, we'll, it'll just be enough more of the same. We don't want to have a new year and more of the same. We've got to know the end of a season marks the beginning of another. When God, when something has ran its course, glory to God, when something has come to the end, hallelujah, it marks the beginning of a new journey. God is never, until we go to heaven, come on believers, until we go to heaven, God is not finished with us. God has work for us to do. There are things we talked about the cycles and the seasons of life, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, fall. Hallelujah. The end of a thing marks the beginning of a new one. When God ends something, it's because he wants to start something else. But there's time and there's process and there's end to it. Glory to God. And there's a way that he wants to go about. You want to chime in? I don't know. That's good. Hallelujah. Come on here. We said, you must be brave enough to step out into the unknown. The scripture we're about to go to, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And we're going to look at the father of our faith, Abraham. Hallelujah. He was Abram, Abram at this time. Hallelujah. You've got to be brave enough to step out into the unknown. It's conquering that fear. It's trusting in God. It's walking with him. Hallelujah. You don't fully know what's next. You don't fully know. You just know this has come to an end. This has come, you know, I, I, it's over. I've got to get out this job. I've got to get out of my mama's house. I've got to get out of my dad's house. I've got to get out of this relationship. Something's got to give. i got to get out of this poor health. i got to get out of this situation. Hallelujah. And you may not fully know every step moving forward. You may not fully have the whole plan laid out from A to Z. Hallelujah. The Bible says the word is a lamp to our feet, a lamp. He gives us guided steps. You have enough, enough light for the next step. The whole runway may not be completely lit up a hundred lights down, 
Glory to God. But you got enough light to move to this one and enough light to move to that one and enough light to move to that one. You just know it's time. Come on here. In Genesis chapter 12, verses one through four. New Living Translation. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Verse four, so Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. It's never too late. 75 years old when he's entering into this new scene, when he's heard the voice of God. I'll give you a free nugget. It just hit my spirit. God doesn't always necessarily tell us everything along the way. But when you've got a promise, when God lets you know something, he told Abraham to encourage him along the journey. Look, you're going to be blessed as you go. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. When you make this step, because as you're obeying God and as you're stepping out, you will encounter some things. You will endure some things. God encourages you with the promise to keep you well, you know, during your passage, when you're going through some things, when you're stepping out, hallelujah, you hold on to the promise to keep you. Now, listen, Abraham, the Bible says there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. Abraham grew up in his father's house. He was there. Mom and dad, you know, there's a time when it's time for, for, for you know, Keisha to leave home. When it's time for, you know, Tony to get out, glory to God. When it's time for your kids to transition out, there's a time. And Abraham's grew up, Abram has grew up in his father's house. And we'll even read more. He's, you know, served there and he's amassed some wealth and he's got some servants and he, he has served, he has worked. But the Lord God has come in and said, Abraham, now what? Now is the time. It's time for you to go. Hallelujah, it's time for you to move out into what I have for you. It's time for you to press out. It's time for you to move forward, hallelujah, out into the unknown. He said, you're gonna go to the place I will show you. I'm gonna lead you. I'm gonna guide you. I'm gonna direct you. You're stepping out, hallelujah, without the full GPS, without every turn by turn direction, without every turn, without every step, you're stepping out. Why? Because God says it's time. Hallelujah. Now listen, if if our times, if there's a time, you know, to embrace, a time to cast away, a time to gather, a time to throw away, if there's a time to go, a time to come, a time to, to leave, how do we know? How can we know? If our times and seasons are in God's hands, how can we know God's timing? Because God's timing is everything. God's time is the best time. Hallelujah. When God says it's time, ooh, you better rejoice. When the master, when the king, when the, when the Lord of lords says, hey, it's time, it's because there's, he's going to make everything converge. Hallelujah. Because it's all a divine setup. But how can we know when it is time to move on, when the season has ended? When things have run their course, hallelujah. How can we discern that a season is coming to an end? That it's time to say goodbye. How can we discern that? How can we know that? Because that's critical. I can't leave too early. I can't leave prematurely. And I can't leave too late. I want to be in step with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I want to be in step with the Spirit of God. How can we know? Listen, there are signs. Glory to God, woman of God. Don't throw me off now. I will shout. I'm right gonna about you now. Yeah. We're going to get with you. Come on here. Eye contact. There it is. <laughs> Listen. How can we discern that a season is coming to an end? How can we know 
that it's time to say goodbye, that it's time to walk away. Hallelujah. There are signs. There are signs that precede certain events. Hallelujah. There are markers. There are things that let you know something is about to happen. Something needs to happen. Something is about to take place. There are signs. Hallelujah. The Bible talked about, when we were talking about this season, he talked about the sun and the moon, how they, they were for signs and they're for seasons. Hallelujah. There are signs that your season is shifting, signs that your season is changing, signs that we've come to the end of this. Hallelujah. For example, are there not signs that a dog is about to attack? And it would serve you well if you're around dogs, to know the what? Signs that a dog is about to attack. Signs that the dog is nervous. Signs that the dog is scared. What they say when those ears are tucked mm -hmm. and when they're looking off to the side, they may be growling, taking a particular stance. Signs that that cat is fully, yeah. he's about to pounce. Come on here. Signs that a fight's about to break out. Mm -hmm. You already know. We got eyes to see and ears to hear. You see some, you hear somebody get loud, you hear some commotion. Folk get nuts. Like, oh man, it's about to go down. Mm -hmm. We we saying a quick prayer. Lord, please don't let them break out in here. <laughs> Lord, please keep them. Every evil spirit, I'm buying ain't nothing. You know, especially nowadays, for shooting. Yeah. But there are signs. Signs. Sometimes something happens, and it's hindsight that we say, man, I ignored all the signs. The signs were there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Signs that a spouse is cheating. Signs of child abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, there are signs. Okay, hey, something's going on here. Stuff ain't normal. Yes. God will give you signs. Hallelujah. To let you know that, look, this particular season of your life, glory to God, yeah. is over. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye. Me and First Lady were talking. One of the signs we said is constant and continual inner and outer conflict. Mm -hmm. Constant and continual inner and outer conflict. That's feuding and fighting, turmoil within and without. Signs that something is coming to an end. Hallelujah. When there's constant and continual fighting, constant and continual conflict, Constant and continual contention. Hallelujah. There's that inner turmoil. Hallelujah. These are signs. These are markers that you must examine. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to be looking at Genesis 13. First lady is working. Anything you want to say about that? Not yet. <laughs> First lady is going to chime in. Hallelujah. But signs and markers, look, there's constant and continual. You know, you're in a place, you're at a job, you're in a circle, you have a friendship, you have a relationship, constant bickering, constant fighting, constant feuding. Parents, okay, you know, your children are in the same room. Hallelujah. It's time of bickering, fighting, arguing. What do you do? Look, y'all need to separate. Hallelujah. If you're able and, you know, uh, well to do, you know, if y'all maybe are in the same house, this is letting you know, look, it's time they need to get their own room. You know, if we're able, look, we need to say about moving. We need to start seeking the Lord. You know, there's too much bickering. There's too much fight. There's too much arguing. There needs to be a separation. Hallelujah. We, we need to, this, you know, time of them being in the same room and this has ended. How do we know? There's too much arguing, too much bickering, too much fight. What's another sign? Another sign. When you're growing, when your growth, this could be physical growth, spiritual growth, emotional growth, financial growth, emotional growth, growth. Hallelujah. When your growth is being misinterpreted. Hallelujah. And misunderstood. And it's making you become a target and you're being attacked. Lord have mercy. Can you this on the bottom? Because I can dance in my own head. <laughs> Listen, when your growth, when your growth, physical, spiritual, 
emotional or financial. We're going to see in the scripture how growth created, caused conflict. Your growth, hallelujah. When you're growing, you're striving, you're, you're growing in your walk with God. You're growing in your walk of faith. You're growing as a person. You're growing as a mother. You're growing as a husband. You're growing just as a man, just as a woman, just as a person. You're just growing as a human being. You're changing. Hey, you know, my perspective is changing. Glory to God. My growth, and it's being misunderstood, and it's being misinterpreted, and they're saying you're arrogant, and they're saying you're prideful, and, you know, you've changed. You, you think you're better than us now. No, no, no. It's not about that. I'm growing. Hallelujah. I'm expanding on the inside. Praise God. I, I, I am changing as a person. Hallelujah. Life is about growth. We go through seasons. We go through circumstances. We grow through what we go through. I ought to be growing. Hallelujah. If I go through a season, I ought to be learning. I ought to be growing. Hallelujah. But it's being misinterpreted, and now you're being attacked. Now you're targeted. You're being targeted, mistreated, mishandled. Hallelujah. These are signs that, wait a minute. I, don't, I might not need to be in this relationship because if you can't handle my growth, if you can't handle who I'm becoming, who God, listen, is making me to be, I don't want to be on that old form of stuff no more. Yes, I used to cuss. Yes, I used to smoke. Yes, I used to turn up. I ain't about that no more. I ain't on that no more. I'm on, I'm on this now. And if you can't handle that, this relationship needs to end. It's time to say goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. Hallelujah. Signs. These are signs. Listen, also, as we talk about conflict and things happening, what are, what are some other signs? Listen, when you're trying to resolve a matter in a godly way, despite your attempts to resolve a matter in a godly way, your peace is still greatly affected. Your peace is not remaining. Your peace is never sustained. Hallelujah. We know the Bible says peace is our umpire. First lady talked so beautifully a while ago. Peace isn't just a feeling. Peace isn't just that. You know, I'm at peace and quiet. The house is quiet. I'm in peace. No, that, that don't necessarily mean you're at peace. The absence of activity or trouble doesn't automatically equate peace. Because you can have peace in a storm. You can have peace while hell is breaking out around you. You can have peace in a situation. Everybody else is in panic and chaos and frustration. You have the peace to know, look, God got it. Hallelujah. This economy is turned upside down. Look, I'm on God's government. I'm not worried in that way. Hallelujah. Now, it's okay to have some concern. You get news and, and move in wisdom. But I'm talking about worry. The Bible talks about how worry, fret. You know, the Bible says fret not. That means don't move in anxiety. Hallelujah. That's Philippians. Be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4. But in all things by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, be anxious. It said don't fret. That is to move about in anxiety. You're in a certain state. Now it's affecting your decision making. It's affecting how, you know, you're doing stuff. And it says don't do that. But listen, when your peace isn't there, you just don't have a peace. Or, you know, you're talking, you're trying to resolve it. It seems resolved, but that your peace is not a remaining. Your peace is not abiding. Your peace is constantly being affected. Peace is your umpire. Glory to God. Peace is important. And when your peace is constantly being affected, you need to examine, is this a situation I need to stay in? Because again, this is, what do we say, the key? You're attempting to resolve. It's not just, I'm upset, I'm frustrated, I'm out. No, no, wait a minute. Did you try to resolve it? Are you trying to work it out? Not that we're fearful, timid, afraid of confrontation. We don't want to say nothing, so it's easier to just say, my season is up. No, no, wait a minute. God might be trying to grow you. God is after our growth. Sometimes we find ourselves in a challenging position or, you know, there's friction. I mean, you know, it's, it's human nature, it's relationships. You know, you, you go through stuff, hallelujah. But, you're trying to resolve it, and it just ain't. You're constantly butting heads with the boss. They're constantly hating on you. They, you know, it's just, it's too constant. I don't have a peace. I've apologized to y'all. I've tried to make peace. Y'all still coming at me sideways. Y'all still, you know, treating me a certain way. It's time to say goodbye. Come on. First lady working, get in here. Come on here. 
<laughs> Tell me something new. Tell me something new. I mean, honestly, that's just what it comes to. You know, when you're constantly in a position of trying to be the peacemaker in the situation, but there's never any peace being sustained. You're always putting out. You're always the one putting out. You're always the one shifting and trying to adjust. Ooh. You have to stop. Live by the time. Because you're constantly being put in this box. You're constantly shifting and moving around your bones. You're constantly, you know, breaking yourself up. You're constantly apologizing. You, you'll find yourself apologizing for stuff you never did. You'll find yourself, you know, trying to make yourself fit a particular mold for this person to agree with in order to be likable for this person. All these things begin to happen in order to try to make peace. But if you pay attention, that peace Lord will Christ. never be sustained. Mm -hmm. And you constantly come back to a place of conflict. And you constantly are frustrated because you're thinking to yourself, didn't I do this to make this better? Didn't I apologize to try to make us friends? Didn't I do this so that we could get along better and work along better and all these things when the truth is is that the season oh my. is over you're trying to make something live that should have died you're trying to resurrect something that's been dead for years but you just want it to live so bad because it's familiar to you in the words of usher you need to let it burn We're talking about signs. Now, y'all, please give us, you know, 10 more minutes, 10, 10 minutes of grace. We're going to, we got to work through this because this is probably the last uh, message in this season's series. So y'all bear with us now. Don't leave. Now, another one, we talked about what signs that a season has ended, signs of the times, signs that it's time to say goodbye, signs that it's time to move on. When there is a deep discomfort and a deep discontentment, I just can't get with this anymore. I can't get with it anymore. Hallelujah. We talked last week when Elijah in 1 Kings was sent to the brook. Hallelujah. He had prophesied that a famine was coming and that it was going to come. No land, I mean, excuse me, no rain was going to come on the land. The Lord commanded him, hey, go hide by the brook. And he commanded ravens to sustain him, bringing him bread and meat in the morning and the evening. And for a while, the brook flowed, glory to God. But there came a time when God was ready for him to move forward, when God was ready for him to move to the next place, because there is another place for you. God does have more for you. Hallelujah. You've been sustained in that place of sustaining. There came a time when the brook dried up for Elijah because there had been no rain. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So that which sustained him, now it's drying up. I'm not getting the same that I used to get. Hallelujah. It just ain't the same. The feelings ain't the same. The, 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 the provision, the resource, the, what I was receiving isn't the same. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that I want to jump in with right there, and this is for any pastors and anyone else who may be watching. Um, it can be a hard thing to let a member go. It can be a very hard thing, especially when it's like that person has become family to you, when they've become closely connected to your heart. But we must have the heart of God about a matter. And the thing is this, if you don't have it in you to take a person to the next level in their walk, you've got to let them go. If you have dried up for them spiritually, not saying that you are dried up, but your part in their journey mm. has dried up. You're the brook that mm. has dried up. Mm. The, you're the raven that has been called to quit in sustaining that person. God is shifting them to move on to the widow. It's not saying anything negative about you. And it's not saying anything negative about them. So don't take it personal and start attacking 
a member. Don't start cursing a member and start telling them they're not going to go to where they're supposed to go in God because they're no longer with you. Their season has not ended. You don't know anything about seasons ending. No, seasons do in, especially when you are not equipped to take them where they're supposed to go next. People don't have to stay with you forever. And it doesn't mean that you have to come into a place of conflict with an individual either. We have a member right now that is going to be moving on. And it doesn't mean that we've dried up and we're no good and they're no good. It doesn't have to mean that at all. But people's season do end and things shift and things change and God is doing different things. We're in an end time. And it's not our place to hold them down and to tell them, you don't know anything about seasons. You don't know nothing. You don't hear from God. You're in error if you are doing that to people because you are not hearing from the Lord like that. We are not called to oppress God's people. We are called to uplift. And if they're wrong, correct. We're supposed to check. Amen. But we don't oppress and we don't hold people down with curses. If people's time with us has ended, us sustaining people has ended, let them go. Let them move on and bless them while they're gone on. And let the relationship continue to be beautiful. Let the things continue to flourish. It's just that their time of sustainment with you has ended. And that's okay. It's not personal. It's spiritual. But it will become personal with God if you play with his people. Signs that it's time to move on. Where there is disrespect. Here there's three Ds. Where there's disrespect, disregard, and dismissal. We're, we're talking about these things being sustained. We're talking about these things being continual. If you're in a job, in a friendship, in a relationship, you know, in a circle, in a place, wherever you find yourself, where there is where there's continual disrespect. Come on, somebody. There's continual disregard for you and your feelings and your thoughts and your opinions and where you're not valued. Hallelujah. They said go where you're celebrated, not just where you're tolerated. Yes. Where you're not being, you know, really affirmed. Where you're not, you know, where you're being dismissed. These are signs that, okay, hey, let's say you, you had a job and they, they treat you like you ain't about nothing. <clears throat> It's time to, it's time God will use that stuff to say, okay, hey, look, what have I placed in you? Get to the call, get to the assignment, get to the purpose, get serious about your business, get serious about what I've called you to do, get serious about that interest, get serious about that hobby, because there it's not going to flourish there. The river's not going to flow for you emotionally like that, because it's not just about the money. You could be making money, but what? You're still discontented. I'm just not really satisfied. Hallelujah. But, and when, when that is there, these are signs that God could be moving you on. Hey, it's time to chunk deuce. It's time to go. Yeah. I got to get up out of here. Because <clears throat> one of the worst things you can do is ignore the signs. It's extremely dangerous to ignore warning signs of any kind. You cannot ignore the signs. Hallelujah. Trouble and problems will be the result when you ignore the signs. The signs are there. Hallelujah. Quickly, we're going to look in Genesis 13, 6 through 9. Genesis 13, 6 through 9. New Living Translation. Hallelujah. But the land could not support both Abraham and Lot with all their flocks and all their herds living so close together. So here this now, disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abraham and the herdsmen of Lot. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land. It's cluttered, 
It's congested. It's crowded. Finally, finally, Abraham said to Lot, let's not allow what? This conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and we will separate. If you want the land on the left, then I'll take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, I'll take the land to the left. Hallelujah. It is extremely dangerous to ignore the warning signs. If you're driving, your check engine light comes on. Or if, if you're driving in a car and smoke coming from up under the hood, you see smoke coming under the hood and you smell a burning. Oh my. Smoke is a sign that something is wrong. It's not supposed to be smoking like that. It's not for you to keep going on your merry way. Engines start knocking. Your, your performance is being affected. Lord have mercy. You're not driving at the same speed you were driving at. Would it, would it be smart to just continue driving like it's all rude? The signs are there. Hey, something's wrong. There's an issue. I need to check this out. I need to examine. Or, you know, you're looking at the gas gauge. Your check engine light, excuse me, your fuel light comes on. Do you just ignore the low fuel light? Because you want to keep driving. I don't want to stop. Lord have mercy. You got to stop and examine. It's dangerous to ignore warning signs of any kind. Strong, strong pain in your back. Strong, strong pain in your knee. Your vision going blurry, blurry, blurry a couple times a day. That's not time to ignore that. These are signs, hey, signs of a stroke, signs of heart attack, signs of dementia. You don't ignore that. Lord have mercy. You ignore it to your peril and to your destruction. You cannot ignore when these signs are present. The brook is drying up. Elijah, it's not for you to fight the stay at the brook. You got to move on. If you ignore these signs, it could cost you your life. It could cost you your walk. It, gonna, it cost you your peace. It cost you your productivity. It cost you, you know, time and resources and energy when you're not realizing, look, things are being affected here. And ultimately, it's going to cost you your destiny. We're going we're gonna to stop it right there for the sake of time. We're going to stop it right there for the sake of time. We might be back at it next week. Lord have mercy, cuz. Yeah. We need y'all to get this. The, it, it is it's absolutely impossible to go through life and never have to part ways, never have to separate from some people, never have to separate from some things, never have to say goodbye to some things. It's impossible to go through life. And because God will bring you to that season, God will bring you to that juncture, hey, this part of the journey, it's time to separate. Who I want to keep going? I'm going to be a disciplined preacher. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all have to, now listen, y'all have to come back next week. If, if you thought well of this, you've got to come back next week. Hallelujah. you got to come back next week. But you have to know and recognize and look for those signs for the end of a season. Is it not the calendar's letting you know, hey, December's coming to an end? You know, signs, you know, on the calendar, the countdown. Hey, it's about to shift. It's about to change. Autumn, yes, yeah, spring, summer, fall. Okay, that nip and that bite, you start seeing, okay, hey, the season is changing. You better get you a jacket when winter's coming. Signs that winter's coming. You better get you a jacket. Yeah. You better get you some, you know, long johns or some earmuffs, some hat. You bald headed, glory to God, get something on your scalp. Yeah. Come on here. I've been there. We ain't go to whipping <laughs> and hawk all over your head. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Hey, it's gone. But get you something. It, but the point is, <laughs> hallelujah. The point is when the season is shifting, when the signs are there, you need to make ready. 
Don't ignore the sign. Don't ignore the fact that winter's coming because winter's going to come whether you're ready or not. That's right. And you need to be ready. Don't ignore the signs. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you got anything else? No. Y'all come back next week. Amen. We're going to get into the next phase of it. Hallelujah. Now, we never like to close the broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, the Lord of your seasons, hallelujah, the, the God of your journey. And it's just as simple. You start your journey. You start your walk of faith upon confession, recognition, and confession. We recognize our need for him. We recognize that we cannot do this on our own. We talked in Bible study. We recognize, hey, I can't guide and direct my own life. I've made a mess of things. Despite my best laid plans, I just, I cannot do it. Well, you're in good company and God has opened your eyes to your need for him. If you recognize your need, come to him this morning. He will not turn you away. He knows you need him and he loves you and he wants you. Hallelujah. Open your heart. Just invite him in. Jesus comes in by invitation. He invites you and you invite him. Just pray from your heart. God, I come to you this morning. Come on. I come to you this morning and I ask you to forgive me. I admit and I recognize I do wrong and I've done wrong and I've messed things up. And I need your help today, God. I need your help. I come to you, come to the end of myself. I ask you, God, please help me. Please forgive me. Forgive me for everything I've done against you and everyone else. Forgive me for the mess I've made, the lies I've told, the lives I've broken, the pain I've caused. Forgive me, God. Forgive me today. I ask you for forgiveness. I do believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I ask you to accept me into your kingdom. Wash me. Clean me, cleanse me, purge me, make me a new person, make me different, make me over again. Take my life and do something with it. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior today. I receive you. I take you as my Lord and my Savior. Help me to live for you. Fill me with your spirit. Rescue me and save me from hell eternal. Help me to walk with you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. We come to him, we turn, we re and God, you know, helps us along. We turn, we got to turn our back on some things. We talk about the end of some things. Yes. That you know, coming to Christ, that's the end of that season of horror and terror and the devil's reign over your life. There's yes. some things you got to say bye to when you come to Christ. Some ways when you come to Jesus, some relationships have got to end. The the, the sinful things and bondages and Things that just never are any good for us. Yes. Things that may feel good momentarily, but are destructive. That, that, are, that are horribly, you know, disfiguring and that are sin against God that he wants us out of. If you pray that prayer for the first time, hallelujah, we rejoice and we thank God. If you rededicated your life, don't feel bad. Come on here. I mean, I've rededicated my life so many times, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I'll do it right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't feel bad. If you're rededicating your life, because along the journey, along the way, we realize sometimes we can get off track. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's like, man, Lord, I just, I want to do better. I want to be better. Our heart is always to, man, Lord, I want to please you. I got off track. I was tripping. Lord, I was too carnal this week. Lord, I, you know, forgive me. We ask God for forgiveness. We rededicate. And we get right back on track with Jesus. If you prayed that for the first time, let us know. Yes. Send please. it to the email. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey, I, I've given my life to Jesus. Now what? <laughs> and we will help you along by God's grace. Find you a Bible-based, Bible-teaching, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost house. Yes. Hallelujah. Right in here. Get in this house. Boom. Right in. Yeah. In this house. Come Amen. On. Find you Continue. a place. Amen. But let us know. Hallelujah. It's important. In all honesty and sincerity, but if it's not here, you got to get to a place where you get around some other believers, where you can get with, you know, a pastor and a flock and a family. We're, we're a universal body, but hallelujah, that, that local body, that local church, that, that body of believers, that those fellowship and, you know, those pastors who actually care, who are not trying to get something from you and manipulate you, you know, I'll let you on the side, mm -hmm. you know, do stuff underhanded. No, no, who genuinely care. Just want to see you grow and get to heaven and 
and glorify God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let us know. You know, we're here for it. And again, if you want to become a member, if you want more information about the ministry, hallelujah, we're, we're yes. good. Yeah, we're, we're good with, you know, hey, I just, you know, we'll call you. Glory yes. to God. Hey, I just, you know, wanted to, you know, learn a little more. Visit the website and we'll be able to answer, you know, questions you have. Hallelujah. That you can make an educated and informed spiritual decision because it is vital and it is important. Especially in these end days. Come on. We need each other. We need Jesus and we need each other. Hallelujah. And that's what it's all about. Now, it's seed time. Don't, don't, don't run yet. Lock them in. <laughs> Close the doors. Hallelujah. Don't let them out. <laughs> Praise God. We love you all. Listen, it's seed time. We want you to be blessed. God's got a system in place whereby you can be blessed beyond your ability to produce for yourself, beyond overtime, glory to God, beyond a second and third job, beyond beg, borrowing, dealing, and hustling. Hallelujah. There is a system in the kingdom, seed, time, and harvest. You can sow. You can be blessed, glory to God, based upon what you do, your decision, in obedience to God's word is two throughout scripture that we see, hallelujah, when we give. Bible says in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Glory to God, press down, shaken together and running over. It said in Galatians, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. He said in Genesis, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Come on, it's, it's two throughout the word. Mm -hmm. You got Proverbs that tells you, honor the Lord with your wealth. Honor the Lord with your substance. Mm -hmm. And with the best, the first of all you produce. It says your vats are going to overflow with wine. Your rains are going to be filled with barns. <laughs> your barns, <laughs> add a minute, your barns <laughs> are going to be filled with rain. Yes. Come on. <laughs> We're gonna, he gonna feel, yeah, he's gonna feel your grain with barn today. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Increase and overflow comes by obedience. He wants to give it to you. Hallelujah. But you got yeah. to show yourself faithful. There's an exchange. Let God see you being obedient. Work the principles. Hallelujah. Again, nothing too big, nothing too small. We're on the cash shop. Label that seed. Yes. Put an address on it, direct it. Where does this come from? In 2 Corinthians, was it first or 2 Corinthians, when he likened the word, excuse me, when he likened their gift, mm -hmm. I think it was 1 Corinthians uh, 8 and 9, when he likened their gift to seed. He says, if you, he says, remember this, as he was talking about their gift to the church in Jerusalem, to the believers. He said, remember this, a farmer who sows sparingly, reaps sparingly. The one who sows bountifully reaps bountifully. Your salary, excuse me, your hourly wage employee, you work a little bit, you get a little check. Yeah. You work two hours, you can't spend no 40 hour check. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about PTO and vacation time, it just is what it is. You're putting, you know, you're getting out, which you put in. You work nine hours and you're mad at the person who worked a hundred hours. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at their check. They earn that. They work for that. Hallelujah. Let your seed work for you. Mm. Get it in the ground. Let your seed work for you beyond what you can do for yourself. Obedience to God. Hallelujah. He'll do for you what you cannot do for yourself when you obey him. Hallelujah. And you do got to stretch sometimes. You do got, man, first let him do it. There are times when you're challenged and when that need is great and you've got to do a little more. That $2 ain't going to get it all the time. That $5 ain't going to get it, especially in proportion. Yes. You know, God sees you with, you know, extra three, four hundred and you're pinching off a dollar at a time. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, and, but you have a great need. Yeah. You know, God see, you know, he's, he's blessing you with all this, all this, all this. And he's, you know, expecting you to bring a portion back to him. Hallelujah. And then he's going to bless you for it. And look, it's not because God is broke. Yeah. But do you truly favor his righteous cause, his work in the earth? Look, we can't get to Africa. We can't get to India. We can't get to what? We can't get to Los. We can't get to Sin City. Right. We can't get to Las Vegas. You barely get around the corner. Hello. <laughs> Come on here. You can barely get around the corner without gas money. Come on. So it's like, okay, favor God's righteous cause. Let's put money into His ministry. Let's handle business. It's kingdom business, amen. And what you take care of in the kingdom, Daddy 
is going to take care of exactly. you. And don't get nervous because we're talking about money. You know, it's, yeah. it's not that we have our hand. We want to have you know, every time you look up hand in the pocket, like do you have my pocket again? It's time to look up. No, no, no. We want you to be blessed. There's principles to prosper by. And you, you need to be taught that. You need to be told that. We can't ignore it or shun it just because there are some predators out. God's ways don't change. He mm -hmm. wants you blessed. He will bless you according to what you do. He's yes. the Lord of the harvest. He sees your heart. He sees your hands. He knows what you're working with. So, I mean, if, if you know, this is how you come up the levels. As the woman of God said, if you know, if you don't have a hundred, it's not about you giving a hundred. You give it the level you have, but you're pushing. If it's 10 and you give eight, You've given a great measure. You give eighty yeah. percent of what you have. Yeah. I mean, come on. But you're giving it to God through His ministry. That's right. Hallelujah. Always remember. I look, look, God. I'm giving this to you. This is going to you and your work. That's right. In Jesus' name. Amen to that. So y'all do it. We thank you for hanging in there with us. Now listen. No Bible study on Wednesday. No Bible study. I need to see some crying, sad faces. Come on here. <laughs> but no Bible study on Wednesday. It's, you know, we're coming into that Christmas week. So we want to give you some time to just, you know, uh, be with family, prepare, rest. And, you know, if you still got some shopping to do, people are going to be doing some cooking. You know, you're making arrangements and preparation. So no Bible study on Wednesday. Uh, you know, enjoy your, your, your time and your weekend and your family and, you know, prayerfully, you know, Things can work out and you can see your family. We just pray in Jesus' name. God will make a way for you. You know, the holiday season, it brings mixed emotions. Hallelujah. Because, you know, so you can be grieving the death of a loved one or you're just not able to see the loved ones. And, but we pray in Jesus' name that, you know, <laughs> divine surprises. There you go, Daddy. Come on here. <laughs> but we pray divine surprises that God will make some ways for you to be able to see your family. Yes. Hallelujah. That some some connections, you know, would be reestablished. That, you know, mama will call it, daddy will call it, yeah. uncle and sisters and cousins and brothers, and you know, give them a call before Christmas. Yes. No, don't wait till Christmas Day. You know, just hit them up, shoot them a text. And and don't trip, you know, you know where they might be at. You know your family crazy. They may not answer. <laughs> they may not answer, you know, you shout at they ain't even respond. Well, don't trip. You're doing yeah. it, you know, to be a blessing, you're doing it in love. Yeah. As long as you got it. Look, text, call. If you're not at the place of calling, send a text. Send out a mass text, whatever it is. You function in love. Let love consume your heart this week. Let the love of God consume your heart. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. You will be amazed at the joy yes. that will overtake you in the obedience of doing it. I'm telling you, you'll be running around your house singing all I want for Christmas is you. Uh -oh. And you ain't singing it to a man. You singing it to Jesus. That's honey. right. That's right. So let me tell you, Mariah Carey, step to the side because all I want for Christmas is Jesus. Amen. That's right. So have you a good old Merry Christmas this week. I'm telling you, Christmas is every day starting tomorrow. Amen. And if you can, you know, be a blessing to somebody. Yes. It, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it could be a co-worker, somebody you don't even normally talk to. Just if you're able, you know, just seek to be a blessing. You know, acts of kindness. It could be a stranger. It could be maybe somebody you notice often. You know, I work, you know, on a building with multiple floors. You may walk by a particular desk or whatever, and you always notice this person. Hey, just give them a little gift card. It could be $5, $10. It could be, you know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts or something. You know, get you a coffee. I'm just, you know, to get you some breakfast, whatever, you know, yes. just it's the gesture. It's not just the amount. There had to be no thousand dollars. It's just, hey, happy holidays. God bless you. It could be just a card, you know, but just seek, seek ways, you know, to be a blessing to somebody during this season. It, it really does go a long way and it really does have an impact. They may not break down crying. They may not, you know, just have a, a big time external. Some people don't express themselves, you know, all the time, you know, a certain way. But you just know you're blessing them and you're blessing God. Yeah. So just, you know, seek to be a blessing to somebody. Kind word, encouragement, if you can do something tangible. Yes. And let them know, hey, God bless you. Yeah. It's not about being spooky or deep, but you know, you're planting the seed. Let them know. You're telling the truth. It yeah. is the truth. You know, God bless you. Yeah. Jesus loves you. And we ain't got to, you know, hold no 50-minute conversation. Hey, my man, mm -hmm. just want to be a blessing to you. God bless you. You know, 10 bucks. Hey, get you a call. Oh. 
testimony. Hold on. We got to tell you this really quickly before we let you go. Look, we were at Sam's, right? We were standing in line to get, you know, some items for the house because, you know, the kids are out. So they finna try to eat up the house full of snacks. Amen. So we're standing in line and there was a woman that was in front of us and she had a push cart. Well, you know, one of the cars that you drive. And our daughter, she looked and she was like, mommy, can I go help her? Can I go help her get her stuff on the, you know, the little conveyor belt thing? And I was like, uh, yeah, but just ask her first. And our son saw and he was like, I want to go help her too. So we were like, okay, go ahead. And they went up and asked her and she was like, okay. They pulled all her stuff out the car. She had a lot of stuff. They pulled it out, put it on the conveyor belt, came back over to us. Next thing we know, she called them back over to her and she pulled out two $20 bills and blessed both of our children with $20. She pulled $40 out like it wasn't nothing she did, she did. and blessed them with it. Let me tell you, Man. God has something in mind for you. They didn't do it to get money from her. No. They just wanted to bless her. Have that in your mind. God, I just want to bless somebody. You have no idea mm. what God has up his sleeve. Lord have mercy. I love it. Oh, yes. And that's the truth. People of God, we love you. You know, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. And continue seeking him. And we just pray joy over your week. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're going to pray out. But we pray you have a joyful and refreshing week. Any type of sadness or burden or depression. Again, certain seasons, you know, certain times of year, you know, bring emotion. You know, they're thinking about maybe they lost their loved one on Christmas or Christmas Eve. And, you know, it's just that season brings those memories with it. But we just pray God's grace in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray you cover your people. Help us all. Help us by your spirit in Jesus' name. You say we ought to pray for everyone. But intercede on their behalf and ask you to help. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray your help over this holiday season. We pray grace. We pray strength. We pray mercy. We pray kindness, kindness and laughter, God. We pray the joy of the Lord would be their strength in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would visit them, comfort them, and keep them by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Quicken these words to our heart in the name of Jesus. Give us discernment to see those signs and know, God, that you're bringing us to the end of the thing. In the name of Jesus, so you can bring us into something else. We just plead the blood of Jesus over these, your listeners, and your body, and your people. And we just call all well. Cover us this week, Lord. Cover us and our family and our loved ones. No tragedies. No tragedies. No tragedies. Divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray divine intervention. That you would lead God, order, and navigate our steps away from trouble, away from robbers and thieves. Those who may be lying in wait to do wrong. We will not be caught. We decree and we declare we will not be caught or found. And we just thank you for your protection in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You guys, we love you so much, Daddy Vic, as usual. Daddy, you we are love you. so very welcome for God the bless word. You, sir. you are a blessing. You have no idea. We, yes. we appreciate you. And God bless you, sir. God yes. bless you. We love you. Momo, honey, welcome to the AWPM family. We are excited to receive you, honey. You already know you've been in our hearts. We love you. Me and Pastor talk about you all the time. So just know that we love, love, love you. Makisha, she just joined the family last Sunday. Love, love, love you too. Everybody that is a part of this family, we love you. You guys have no idea how much Pastor and I talk about you. We pray for you. We love you truly. And we got some surprises for Samia. Amen. Amen. So know that we love you and we look forward to seeing you soon. Y'all are going to be receiving some calls. Amen. Yes. But remember, 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 no Bible study on Wednesday. Yes. Remember. Find somebody to be a blessing to this week. Yes, it doesn't have yes. to be massive. It's yeah. not about Something. the quantity, yeah. but just the quality of your heart. The quality of your heart. Find somebody to be a blessing to. I don't care if it's just a little notebook that has a biblical saying on the front of the journal. Two, three dollars, four or five dollars just for them to write in. It's the heart. Amen. Find somebody to be a blessing to. And remember, no Bible study this week. Focus on decorating the house and letting your heart be jolly. Amen. Right. We love you guys. We are going to do the same. Come Amen. On.
Get the hall. Deck them all. Balls of hot. What is it? Balls of ball. ball. <laughs> Deck it. Pastor, mess it up the song. Make the Yule tag gay. Come on. Here. Make the Yule tag gay. Amen. 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 Happy. Amen. Amen. But we love you guys and we will see you Sunday. Hallelujah. Love you guys. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. <laughs> Bye-bye.